Hello, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser with San Diego State University. I'm going to show you how to take two different SPSS data sets that have essentially been used as bookends on a PR campaign. And so you might have had a survey at the beginning of your PR campaign, and then you repeat the survey again at the end of your PR campaign. And so you have several items. In this case, uh, we have knowledge three knowledge items that were asked in the pretest, and then we see that the same three knowledge items were asked again in the post-test. So in order to figure out whether the change that we noticed from pre to post-test was statistically significant, we actually have to bring these two data sets and combine them into a single data set. I'm just going to show you the fast way, not the way that brings all of the data set together, but just the quick way that you can use to put the variables that occur in each of the data sets together. So keep in mind that there were probably questions that you asked in the pretest that you did not ask in the post-test, and there were probably questions that you asked in the post-test that were not asked in the pretest. So all I'm showing you how to do is a very quick way to bring together your two data files for the questions that occurred in both the pre and the post test. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the very bottom of my um, uh, data set and I'm in the pre data set right now. You can see it says up here pre campaign and I want to create a new variable called cell and I'll say that if it's a one it was the pretest, and if it's a two it was the post test. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over into this cell variable and because I'm in the pretest test um, data set right here, pre-campaign, I'm just going to copy and paste a one all the way down when my data stops. So I am putting a brand new variable in my pretest data set so that I can tell that indeed these particular uh, variables that will match this were in the pretest. Now I'm going to need to do the same thing in the post test. So if I come in into the variable view for the pretest where I have created that variable cell and I've already set it up and I just copy this to my clipboard, I can then go into my post test, post campaign data set, which I have underneath right here for you to see, and I can paste in the cell, but then I need to go over to the data side and I actually need to do a two because these are all post-test. So I put the two on my clipboard and I copy and paste this all the way down and this will notate then that these variables were the post-test. So I want to go ahead and save both of these files so that um, they're both up to date. And I'm just going to look just to see what variables I expect to have in both of them. So I expect in both of my data sets, I will have these uh, Q1 underscore 1, Q1 underscore 2, Q1 underscore 3. So let's look for those in here. Q underscore 1, underscore 2, underscore 3. Great. That exists in both of them. And so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into uh, one of my active data sets. So I'm actually in the pre-campaign data set right now. And I'm going to merge um, these two data sets. And to do this, I, I have the option to um, insert cases. Cases are people, right? So I go data, and then I go merge, merge files. And I want to add cases. I'm not adding variables. Those are... Uh, those would just be empty if I added them, but I want to add in cases. So it says, hey, um, you happen to have this data set open. You happen to have the post campaign data set open. Would you like to use that? Absolutely. Great idea, SPSS. If it couldn't find it, I could always click on the external data file and then I could uh, browse around for it, but it sees that I have both of these data sets open and it offered me this up as an option and so I'm happy to take that, so I'll press continue. So over on this side, you see variables that are not paired. 
So these are variables that were asked in one data set but not the other. So you might have things that were um, post-campaign measures that asked, did you see this tactic? Obviously that was not in the pre-campaign survey, so it's not going to show up as a paired variable. But I do want to make sure that the variables I care about, you remember these uh, unfamiliar, not at all informed, unknowledgeable, those were Q1, underscore 1, underscore 2, underscore 3. Those did show up as being paired um, because they're in the variables in the new active data set. So I've, I'm okay with everything right now. Again, I'm just doing a quick version of this, and this has got my Q1 underscores 1 through 3. And so I'm going to be happy with this. I'm going to press OK. And then it's all pasted here now in this pre-campaign survey uh, data set. So I want to give this a new name right away because I don't want to overwrite it and, and mess things up because some of the variables might be missing now. Uh, some of them have um, missing cases that go with it, etc. So I'm just going to call this, instead of pre-campaign, I'm going to call this combined pre and post campaign and save. So now you see the name has changed in here. Let me just go ahead and make sure that I have both of my um, pre and post now in one data set. So I'm going to do a frequencies, descriptives, analyze frequencies. And I'm going to go and see cell. And when I do my frequency on cell, I should be seeing both cell 1 and 2. So check it out, pre-test and post-test. An N of 158 versus an N of 91. That seems about right to me. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go back to my um, combined pre and post-test. And uh, at this point, if I have any reverse coding to do, I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to pretend that I don't need to do uh, any reverse coding. And then I'm going to um, take whatever um, index that I have created and use that. So I don't see an index here yet for knowledge. So let me just go ahead and create a knowledge index. Remember, the knowledge index isn't going to work because you can see that these are... Um, Unfamiliar, uninformed, unknowledgeable. Actually, they are all going in the same direction. So these are good. Yeah, so I wouldn't need to do that anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do compute variable. I'm going to call it knowledge. It was 1 underscore 2 underscore 3. And I now have my knowledge variable here at the bottom. And so what I'm going to do in this combined data set is I'm going to set up my t-test. So it's going to be analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test, analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. In the test variable, I'm going to put my knowledge index that I just created. And in the grouping variable, I'm going to put cell and I'm going to click define groups. I'm going to tell it I want you to use the specified values of 1 and 2. So that was pre-test and post-test if you recall. So you need to make sure you click this Defined Groups button right here. So I have it to look at the difference between pre-test and post-test on the index knowledge. Press OK. So in here it tells me what my mean scores are. I can see that from the pre-test to the post-test, I indeed had a change, right? It went from a 13.5. Um, average knowledge score in the pretest to a 14.3. So that's good. But is this test statistically significant? So I have to come over into the independent samples test box and I look under SIG two tailed and I see that that particular finding is not statistically significant. And so while there is a change, that change was not statistically significant. So this is how you go through and you combine your two data sets into one. You save it as a new name. If you need to do any reverse coding, you do any reverse coding. If you need to create any indices for your knowledge, attitude, or behavior scales, then you do that in the combined file. 
And then you run a t-test where you're looking at your um, groupings are cell one versus cell two. And this is how you read your output. So good luck with all of your amazing data analysis, and I hope that you have statistically significant results.